And that's when you'll really start to have clarity and finally be able to like move into what's the solution mode. And it's really very simple. It's really, really very simple. So, and by the way, if you have, hey Dutch, how are you? If you have um, any questions while I'm talking about this, and Dutch is also somebody I know that can chime in on so much of this stuff, because he and I have talked about, you know, all the fitness bullshit that's out there for quite a long time. So. I'm going to share with you, and, and I put this up on the Kelly O Show Instagram one time, and I think I saved it in the highlights reel, but this is just a list off the top of my head of all of the things that I've either read in books or been told by dietitians or trainers over the past however many years that I have literally been told and tried to incorporate all at once. This is the kind of stuff that I'm telling you, all of you, myself included, have been obsessed about and we don't need to be obsessed about this. It's just, it's bullshit. I've been told to not eat fruit. How many of you have been told not to eat fruit? I've been told to not eat carbs, don't eat sugar, don't drink diet soda, don't drink regular soda, don't have anything carbonated, um, avoid starchy vegetables, you can't have potatoes, avoid grains, avoid rice, avoid quinoa, avoid, you know, I could go on and on and on. Um, just focus on clean eating, just focus on whole foods, and you don't have to count calories. How many of you have been told that? You don't have to count calories if you're eating clean. You don't have to count calories if you're eating paleo. You don't have to count calories if you're eating whole foods. If you shop at Trader Joe's and Whole Foods, you're fine. You don't have to count calories. Um, how many of you have joined a diet or a program that says you can have all the green vegetables you want? You can have all the fruit you want. How many of you joined any diet where they say you can have all the fill in the blank you want? Okay, there's something fundamentally wrong with us. If we are saying, I'm too fat, I need to lose weight, but I wanna find something that lets me pig out on as much food as possible, whether it's as much fruit, as much protein and cheese, Atkins, keto, whatever, or fat, um, or it's as much sugar, or I could eat, you know, if that's your goal, you haven't gotten yourself right up here because you should be at some point kind of understanding like, I'm here, I'm carrying an extra 50 pounds because I haven't been eating right and I'm not moving my body and, and my body's capable of so much more. But like, if you're, if you're trying to choose a, a diet or a way to lose weight, and you're trying to find something that's gonna work the fastest, that's gonna require the least amount of effort, that's going to still allow you to gorge on foods, there's something messed up with you up here that you need to get, you need to figure out, okay? That's not my job, I'm not your therapist. Um, how many of you have heard, you know, there's obviously the trendy thing now is go keto, don't even get me started on that. I do have some people um, that are friends of mine who have chosen keto as a lifestyle. For them though, I believe most of the people I know chose it more for a health perspective. They had autoimmune issues. Um, most of the people I see trying keto and buying all these keto products, um, they're doing it for fast fat loss and it's really hard to come out of that and sustain it. And the bottom line is you can go into ketosis naturally when you're fasting and you don't need to have special exogenous ketones products. You don't need to be only eating high fat, moderate protein, hardly any carbs. It, it's just not that sustainable. And I have plenty of experts that I've interviewed on the podcast who can talk about this, but that's my opinion. I'm just sharing my opinion there. How many people have heard this about working out? Don't do cardio. Like all cardio is bad, running is bad, runners are jerks, marathoners are jerks. Dutch, I'm sure you're laughing at this. Um, however, on the other hand, Dutch is somebody right now who is, um, I don't wanna say you're a former marathoner Dutch and I don't wanna put you on the spot, but um, he he's always been a marathoner and now he's a power lifter. And by my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, Dutch has lost, really leaned out after having some serious health challenges in the past. Hint, he's, he's gonna be on the podcast again. I'm gonna be interviewing him about this. Um, but he's gotten very lean and ripped with powerlifting. And I just saw him post something on Facebook the other day, like, hey, I just went out for a run. So you can absolutely get very shredded and lose a lot of weight without having a lot of cardio, but I'm not bashing cardio to that degree. 
Um, I've been told don't do cardio, only do HIIT training, only do interval training. And then I was told that interval training or HIIT training is bad for your adrenals, not to do any cardio because it'll hurt your adrenal glands. Um, excessive cardio will cause adrenal fatigue. Excessive cardio will raise your cortisol. Excessive cardio will lower your cortisol. Cortisol will make you store fat. Um, if you don't eat enough, if you do intermittent fasting, these are all the myths. If you do intermittent fasting, you will put your body in starvation mode and you will store fat. Um, running is bad, but running can be good. It just depends on how much you do. Low states, low states, steady state cardio is bad for you. Steady state cardio can be good for you. It can be good for people with adrenal fatigue. Circuit training is better than isolation training. Isolation training is better for people with adrenal fatigue. Functional training is best. And never, you should never do isolation training because it's not the way people move. I could go on and on and on. Um, and then, you know, I mentioned this at the beginning of this show about people that write me all the time, intermittent fasters who are obsessing and freaking out. They're like, oh my God, my window, my, my window ends at 12 o'clock and I, I had a grape. Have I destroyed everything? I'm leaving the silence on purpose. Like this is what all of this mixed message and nonsense that's permeating the fitness space is doing to people. There are people out there actually obsessing about having a grape or actually obsessing about putting a splash of cream in their coffee because they're intermittent fasting or they're obsessing about the fact that they are an intermittent faster and they got up in the middle of the night and they had something to eat and they're like, oh my God, I found the fasting window. Like newsflash. Intermittent fasting is caloric deficit. I mean, unless you're fasting and you're really doing a fast so that you can go into autophagy, right? And, and you're doing that for health purposes, it's not that big of a deal if you have a piece of whatever that's 30 calories so you can extend your fast longer and cut down your caloric deficit. Ultimately, that's what you need to be focusing on. And that's, I'm giving you the preview. This shouldn't be news to you. A part of what I'm going to be closing up with here shortly is that the, uh, the most important thing that you need to do to lose weight, get rid of all of, your, all of this stuff you don't need to be worried about. Stop obsessing about fruit. Stop obsessing about which vegetables are okay. Stop obsessing about, am I allowed to have a diet soda? Is that going to spike my insulin? Stop obsessing about everything because you know what? The truth is, and I am the biggest person, I'm the best example of this. All of the obsessing that you're doing is causing more damage to your entire body and to your health and to your mindset than anything that you could actually eat. Like, in other words, the damage that a sweet potato could have to you versus the damage that you're obsessing and freaking out and overanalyzing and researching and going and going on Instagram and going on YouTube and watching hours of video to try to figure out how to make your intermittent fasting window perfect or you know make sure that you're doing you know if it fits your macros perfect it's just not that complicated you need to eat less all of us need to eat less you need to if you want to lose weight go on a diet Nobody wants to say that. I don't know why we got into this phase in the fitness space where we, we thought it was cool to go, oh, you don't have to diet, just eat intuitively, just eat whatever you want. Here's where I'm gonna give you two examples that will show you exactly why you, if you are not counting your calories, if you are not in a caloric deficit, if you don't know exactly what you're taking in, you will be spinning your wheels and in this diet cycle, but you're fooling yourself because you're not really dieting, You'll be here for the next three or four years. Do you want to be spinning your wheels for the next three to four years? Or do you want to finally reach your goal? Because you know what? I have probably four different people that I'm interviewing on the podcast who had great success. And this is people that are past the age of 40. Several of them are past the age of 50. I'm 50. I'm about to turn 51. I'm seeing more results now than when I was 30 and I was trying to do, you know, this diet on Monday, the, then I'd skip to another diet on Thursday. I never stuck to anything and I never really dieted because I cut the corners and I made excuses. Some of the people that I'm bringing onto the podcast that you're gonna hear interviews with, all of them got to the point where they said, enough is enough. Nothing I've been doing the past several years has been working. I'm gonna take it back to the basics some of them were using an app, some of them were using a notebook. They said, I am going to cut calories and track what I eat and I'm gonna to commit to whatever it was. Some of them wanted to commit to, you know, 
um, calorie cycling, some of them wanted to just uh, do intermittent fasting and a caloric deficit, whatever it was, they went on a diet for a specific amount of time and they tracked everything and they had more results doing that without worrying about all of this, without cutting out alcohol, without cutting out carbs, without cutting out vegetables, without obsessing about fruit or carbonation or diet soda, all of the obsessing they got rid of. They had bread, they had cookies. It wasn't that they were binging all this stuff, but they were able to have a reasonable way of incorporating treats and, and adult beverages because they were on a diet. And then when the diet was finished, they went into maintenance mode. And they were smart enough to know that when they got into maintenance mode, newsflash, you still have to watch what you eat. It's really, really so much more simple than all of us and certainly the fitness industry has made. So I'm gonna dive right into giving you guys a couple of examples to show you exactly to illustrate my point, like why it is so easy for so many of us to think, I'm dieting, I'm watching what I'm eating, I'm eating all the right things, I don't know why I'm not losing weight. I guarantee you, when I give you these two examples, you'll be able to go, oh shit, like maybe that's what's wrong, maybe that's the missing link for me. So I'm gonna give you two examples, and then we're gonna wrap it up, and if you're watching this either first of all, live now, or if you're watching this on the replay, which most of you will be watching on the replay, please don't hesitate to leave your questions down below. So if you're watching this and you're like, okay, she covered this, but I wanna hear more about this, or I have questions about this, or this is my area of frustration if I didn't cover it, just leave it in the comments below. I promise I'll get back to you. So two examples that I have shared recently with several ladies, either A, that I have been helping, coaching them with their nutrition, with their fitness, um, or also just some friends of mine. Um, so the first one is, now what I'm giving you an example here of is what it's like, I'm using myself as an example obviously, what it's like when you're not dieting and you think you know everything you need to know about the good foods and the bad foods and you're not tracking your food, you don't have a plan. You just think, well, I know how much I need to eat. I know that I should be right around like 1600, 1800 calories. A lot of people say that. I've said that for years. So this is what happens when you have it all up in your head. You think you're doing it right and you think you're tracking and you're not and you don't really have a program. You're not following and you're not tracking. Here's where things get off hand. And, and I will liken this very much, many of you might be able to relate, a lot of us do the same thing with our finances. It's like, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna get too close up with my finances. How many of you have been like I was in the past where you have money that you earn from, from your job, it gets deposited into your bank account, and you, you might look at it and see what's in there, and then you pay a couple bills and you have an idea of what's left over, but then you just wing it. Like you're just going out and spending, you're not in your bank account every day, you're not checking your balance, you're not seeing um, that, oh, I didn't cancel that Netflix. Oh, I'm still paying for Hulu. Oh, I've got an Audible subscription. Or, oh, wait a minute, I didn't approve that Amazon purchase. What about that? I didn't buy that. Like you're not in there every day checking. And so what happens when you don't pay attention to your finances that way is that one time you're going to get a fraud alert or something on your phone and you go log into your bank account and suddenly you're overdrawn how many of how many is uh, how many of you can't talk how many of you have had that happen or how many of you that's your approach you don't want to deal with your finances so you avoid it many of us don't want to deal with our fitness with weighing ourselves, with tracking ourselves, and so it makes us uncomfortable it makes us uncomfortable to get on the scale it makes us uncomfortable to take progress photos every day it makes us uncomfortable probably in a similar fashion to track what we're eating because we think it's a pain in the butt and that goes back to what i said at the beginning of this thing you really want to lose weight. You say you're going to do everything. When somebody says something simple like, get out a damn notebook and start writing down what you're eating, we're like, oh, that's too much. I can't do that. Really? You can't take out a piece of paper and write down what you're eating? That's too much? That's too much work? Seriously? So one of the very typical examples that I can share with you is I would, I'm always paying attention to labels. So, and I remember this very distinctly would happen quite a lot. 
Um, I would have my breakfast and I've been doing pretty much intermittent fasting for most of the past two or three years. I stopped for a while when I was working with a dietitian and, and I've gotten back on it. But typically what I do is I wake up in the morning, I have two cups of coffee, um, I use a low calorie almond milk and stevia, and then I put um, collagen in it and inulin, which is essentially fiber. So I have two cups of coffee and then I typically will not eat until lunch. So on a typical day, I'd have that and I would know that my coffee was 80 to 150 calories, depending on which almond milk I'm using. So I'd finish my coffee and I would know in my head I had 150 calories, right? Now, back then, let's just say I was aiming for what, what I'm aiming for now. My caloric deficit is 1,600 calories a day, okay? In order to lose weight, I need to be at 1,600 calories a day. So. If I knew that I'd had 150 calories in my head, I know, okay, this is cool. So I would get to lunch and I would have my lunch. Now let's say I made my lunch and usually I'd be very specific. I would measure my food and I would figure out exactly what my lunch is. And I'd usually have like a big healthy salad. You guys have been watching me for a while. You've been following me. You probably would see pictures of what I had for lunch. And I would say, look, this big salad with turkey and you know, um, this hummus dressing and this, this, and this, you know, this is 650 calories. And so I'd have half, cause it'd be this huge salad, right? I'm just remembering a certain time and a certain example, cause it happened all the time. I'd have half of it for lunch and then I'd have half, you know, in mid afternoon. So I'd have 650 calories, right? And then I'd have, so to my, to, in my head, I'd be like 650 plus 200, you know, give or take, I'm at 850, which means that I have about 800 calories left. And then I'd have a protein bar, right? Because it was like right before my workout. So then what did I say? I was at 850, you add another 250 for a protein bar, that brings you up to 1100. That means I have 500 calories left. Then my friend Sherry would call me and she would say, hey Kelly, um, I wanna go out, you wanna meet me for sushi? And in my head, I'd immediately go, you know, sushi's gonna be, now great people, sushi's healthy food. We all say that, right? A lot of you are gonna go, how is she thinking that sushi's bad? Sushi's good for you, okay? It, don't label food good and bad. This is, you've got to understand that this is where we give ourselves permission to F up, okay? So in my head, Sherry's calling me going, why don't you meet me out? I know I have 500 calories left to be in a caloric deficit. I'm like, sure, you know what, it's sushi. So I go and I kid myself and say, I'm just gonna have sashimi, because if I were to just have sashimi, salmon sashimi, which is just the raw fish, for those of you that don't know, no rice, and if I was gonna have seaweed salad, I could potentially just have 250 or 300 calories, but what typically happens is I get there and then we decide to order this appetizer and we split these two rolls. So realistically, I would probably walk away, instead of having 500 calories, I probably have 700, 800 calories. Now, some of you are listening to this and you're going, what's the big deal? Like it's an extra 200 calories. People, this is where we screw ourselves over. Because do you know what, what I would typically do in a situation like that? And now I'm not saying that I ordered with Sherry necessarily the fried spider roll with all the mayonnaise on it. It's, it's, that's not the point. The point is whether you have the most pure rice, uh, just plain rice, no fried fish, no mayonnaise, no bad sauces, it still can be a lot of calories when you're having the rice. So if I had 800 calories versus 500, I'm 300 calories over, okay? Normally what I would tell myself leaving that sushi place, how many of you ladies have done this? I will eat 300 calories less tomorrow. How many of you, I'm looking at you right now because it was me, I would say to myself, I'll cut back tomorrow, okay? And then what would happen tomorrow? Do you think I would cut back and do 300 calories less? Do you think I would only do 1,300 calories the next day? No, I would just go about my normal day. And then what could happen is that there were times when, again, you start training really hard. You start working out with a trainer and you start making accommodations because like I told you, I was doing in the early days faster way to fat loss. And they had this thing where they say, oh, after leg day, you can have a donut. Well, then I would say, oh, but you know what? I train even harder than they do. So I shouldn't just have one donut. I should have two or maybe three or maybe a dozen. And then I would just take things to the extreme and I would have, instead of one day, one donut treat, I would have after every single time I trained with Blaine, I would go get donuts. 
and you don't think about it. And I would tell myself that I was accommodating here or accommodating there. How many of you have done things like that? Or maybe you have an unplanned outing at the office, right? Everybody goes out and you told yourself you're gonna work out Wednesday night because you said you're gonna work out Monday night, Wednesday night, and Friday night. And then Wednesday night comes and it's somebody's birthday at the office and everybody says they're gonna go out and you're like, okay, I can either be a party pooper and go home and work out or I can just this once go out with everybody. So then you go out with everybody and then you have wings and then you have mozzarella sticks and then you have potato skins and then you have a margarita. And realistically, one little thing like that, if you're not watching it and you don't know what the calories are, you could easily, and if, if this surprises you, it really shouldn't. Something like that going out for happy hour with people, you could blow it and add an extra 1,500 to 2,000 calories to your day. So not only have you missed your workout, but you've added an extra 2,000 calories or whatever because you didn't want to be the hardcore person. You didn't want to be the party pooper. Guess what? I'm not saying it's easy to go well, actually, I do think it's easy. I, I do think it's it gets easier after you've done it. Go to the happy hour and, and have water or Diet Coke and maybe let yourself have a bite of something, but say, you know what? I'm really committed to my goals this year and this is the kind of stuff that sets me off track, so I hope you'll respect I'm not gonna eat anything. Most people are not gonna be a douchebag and push the food on you, and if they are, just learn to ignore it. You're a grown person. Like, you make your own decisions, right? If somebody came up to you and said, hey, Sally, I really want you to go over there and kill somebody. Would you please just do it for me, please? I'm pretty sure you'd say no. So if somebody's telling you to eat something you don't want or drink something you don't want, just say no. Put your big girl panties on and like grow up. Stop making excuses. So that's example number one. And I can tell you, I did that all the time. I would go over on my calories, whether it was took a client out for lunch, I ate more than I thought, and then I get to the end of the day, or I'm calculating my calories at the end of the day, and I'm like, oh shit, I forgot that I had Starbucks. And then I look up that Starbucks drink, and oops, that chai latte was 270 calories, it wasn't 110 calories. Oops, I forgot, oh, I also had a biscotti, that's 110 calories, so there's 300 calories. People, the, the little extras that you don't think add up, add up so much more than you think. And the reason I'm being so detailed on this is if you wrap your head around this, this should piss you off because you'll probably be like, shit, I've been doing that all the time. And you think that you're eating well, but guess what? You can get fatter or get fat or keep yourself from losing weight by overeating on celery. Newsflash, everybody's talking about celery juice is, is the panacea to everything. Guess what? If you just add and juicing a whole bunch of celery, I'm not saying it has 80 billion calories, but you can overeat on fruit. You could overeat on rice. You can over, well, I think we all know you can overeat on cereal. That's like the worst offender of all. You, it does, it's not just cookies and cake and fried food that is what pushes you over into oblivion. The, the obvious offenders that can jack up your calories, alcohol, sugary snacks, packaged foods, protein bars, most protein bars, um, especially the ones sold in gas stations, which are like this size or like they're bigger than this. Um, so alcohol, packaged foods, sugary foods, um, uh, protein bars, um, and like bread kind of stuff, bread and pasta, we all know that. Those are the things that are very easy to eat a lot of, not be full, and it'll make you want more. Um, but people, you can still overeat on vegetables. You can still overeat on good, healthy foods. You can still overeat when you think you're intuitively eating. And these are the simple mistakes that so many of us make. And because we're not tracking, okay, I'm not saying that these situations won't come along, but, you will give yourself so much more power. Let me just show you, because I'm just gonna grab. Here's the key to your success, a notebook. Now, some of you might like my fitness pal. I'm getting kind of ahead to the closing, but I'm almost there. Some of you guys might like my fitness pal. The reason that I switched to doing a notebook and doing it old school, I mean, like seriously, this is so ugly, but I just write down because when I write down what I eat and I keep like a running total, can you guys see it there? It's so messy. For me, I like to be able to glance and at three o'clock, I just like to be able to like 
glance at my notebook and see, oh, okay, I'm at a thousand calories right now. To me, now call me lazy, when I have to open up my fitness pal, I have to open up my fitness pal, I'm opening it up right now, I have to wait for it, and then I have to hit diary, and by the way, when I add food, you have to hit add food. I think I still think it's a great app, but the reason it's faster for me to write something down in a notebook and I can bring it with me. Yes, you can bring your phone with me, but this is what's annoying. Like I have to hit, I have to hit the, let me show you. I have to hit the add button and then I have to hit food and then I have to hit breakfast. And then also because I'm nearsighted, I have to go, oh, let me get my glasses and type it in. I'd rather just write it down. I just rather write it down because I also think that when I write something down, it's gonna stick in my head faster. But people, getting back to what I said before, you can have those times where you F up, where you go out to sushi and you have an extra 300 calories, but if you write it down and then you turn the page, however it is that you record your stuff, and you go to the next day and you say, you've gotta make up for 300 calories you will be more spot on and you will hit your goals than if you're just, I've got it up here. Because that's what happens when all of us who've been listening to all these fitness myths and we get a little cocky, we think, oh, I'm cool. Do you know how many times, let me tell you something. I'm gonna share cocky Kelly Alexa stuff with you. I would say to my trainer, I would say to my man, I would say to people that follow me, you guys, seriously, if there was a camera in my house, all of you would look at me and go, if Kelly Alexa can't lose weight eating what she's eating, I don't know who can because I eat so healthy. Look at my refrigerator. It's hummus. It's grass-fed beef. It's, you know, organic uh, pasture. I hope I'm saying this right. Not pasture-raised chicken. You know what I'm saying. Like the purest chicken. I'm making turkey meatloaf, blah, blah, blah. I'd be so like, why am I not losing weight? And then I get to meet with my trainer and I go, well, I'm eating. And he'd go, what did you eat yesterday? And I'd say this, this, this. And then I had turkey meatloaf. Oh, turkey meatloaf? Do you put ketchup in it? And I'm like, yeah. Oh, it's the sugar. It's, there's sugar in ketchup. Not saying there isn't. Then he would tell me how wrong it was that I was having ketchup and how wrong it was that I was putting, um, uh, that I was having carbonated water with lemon in it because he's against any carbonation. He's also against any fruit. So I was obsessing over all of this stuff when really, you know what you should be obsessing about and the only thing you should be obsessing about, and it shouldn't necessarily be an obsession, it's just simple, caloric deficit, caloric deficit caloric deficit. You have to be in a caloric deficit. You have to track your food. Most people that are not losing weight are not tracking their food. They're winging it. They're not they're not aware of all the Starbucks and the coffee house coffees that they're doing. They're not aware of how many times they do nighttime snacking. How many of you have a problem with nighttime snacking? How many of you, like me, sit down with your man or your significant other and you watch Netflix because you want to just detox by the end of the day, right? How many of you make a bowl of microwave popcorn? My man is really into popcorn. I didn't used to be into popcorn. He would sit down with a big bowl of popcorn and I'm sitting there having half of it and I'm not tracking those calories. And in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm sure this is like 40 or 50 calories. It's not. In fact, I should probably pull that out and see what it is. Um, how many of you had something like popcorn? Or I would make um, these peanut butter balls. One of my friend Lauren's great recipes. Each peanut butter ball is 108 calories. When I first started making them, I wasn't counting them. I wasn't counting the calories. But I remember saying to myself, how many of you who are fit foodies or read blogs or read bloggers or are on Pinterest and you're pinning all of these paleo energy balls, pumpkin, you know, all natural ingredients, blah, blah, blah. It's pure. It's whole living. If you're eating sugar and snacks, it has calories, people. So I would be making these great tasting four ingredients, peanut butter balls that had oats, honey, dates, and peanut butter. Okay. Each one's 108 calories. Easy peasy. I could have three to four, easy. And there's no way that there were not times that I had four to five. And my man was the same way. He, he and I finally joked, we're like, we need to get these away from each other. I mean, from, from us, because we're just popping them, you know? That's six, 700 calories. So if you'd already hit your caloric window and you're sitting down and you're like, I've got a hundred calories, I can have something. And how many of you find yourself wanting sweets or carbs or something at night? Pretty much the whole world. If you're not tracking and you sit down and you have snacks like that, when you're trying to lose weight, you are doing yourself a disservice to not either A, get your freaking notebook and bring it with you because you owe it to yourself. 
This, if you're looking at me and you're listening to any part of this and you're like, oh my God, Kelly, I'm not going to take a notebook around and write it down, then you know what? You deserve to stay right where you are. You don't want it bad enough. If you want it bad enough, then say, you know what? For two months, whatever it is, one month, six weeks, two months, 90 days, I personally say, I like the idea. I created a whole Facebook around this, committing to a putting yourself first for a year. Doesn't mean you have to diet for a year. Give yourself a certain amount of time where you say, I freaking deserve to go balls to the wall and diet and try to do this differently than I've done it for the past five years. Because newsflash, I've been trying this for four years, for three years, for two years, whatever. It's not working. 